One thing is for sure and that I still stand behind is that I still do find the size 28 a little bit heavy. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Amy and in today's video, I am doing finally my Kelly comparison between the size 28 in Cellier and the size 25 in Cellier. Ever since I revealed this beautiful Kelly 28 Cellier in Gripal, a lot of you were wondering how I'm doing with it, how I'm loving it, am I keeping it, and a lot of requests for reviewing the size 28 Kelly. For me, the 28 is still not like the 25, which is my preferred size. For me, if this color was in this size, it would be literally 100% perfect. Not to say that those of you who own the 28, there's anything wrong with it. Of course not. The 28 is such a good bigger size that is not huge. It is a good size. Don't get me wrong. I think most people will get away with the size 28 as a size that is not so small and that is also not too heavy, not too bulky and for most people the 28 still will look great on pretty much any size frame. But it's just me personally, I prefer the size 25 because I like a smaller profile but of course I couldn't say no to this Kelly 28 because Ah, oh, every time I even just look at the viewfinder, I still find this color gorgeous. I love the palladium fresh hardware and it is such a beautiful white. Love that it's a cool tone white. I personally prefer cool tones rather than warm tones and yeah, I, I just fell in love with it. So I couldn't say no to it, obviously. But I will definitely be able to share some pros and cons on both of them, compare them for you, do more mod shots, all the nitty gritty nerdy specs that nobody else cares except maybe a few of us, including myself. I'm such an analytical person uh, that um, might be helpful to some of you. Before we get into it, I wanted to thank Oelia for letting me uh, present you their newest spring summer collection. Oh my gosh, you guys know no, I am such a fashionista. I was into clothes before anything else, before shoes, before handbags, before jewelry. Of course, I have to talk about the dress that I'm wearing right now. I've already worn it a few times. A lot of you have already commented, asked me where it's from. So I wore this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous cotton dress to an event at the Mercedes with a Michelin star restaurant and it was the perfect dress to wear there because it also went with the floral kind of antique theme of that restaurant. Button all the way down has a beautiful flare, pockets on top of that and it comes with this optional also belt and I'm loving the little bow that I did today. When I saw it I was immediately smitten by it and loved it so much. So uh, this dress, highly recommend. Got it in extra small. You guys need it. It's so, so beautiful. Another gorgeous, super ethereal floral silk dress. I actually have three different items in this same pattern because I loved, I love this sort of floral, a very beautiful muted pink, beautiful braided neckline, a little bit of slit here. And it's sleeveless. It also has this tie here on the waist. It's so comfortable. Literally the most pretty thing that I've ever seen Goelia make. And I'm just so impressed, you guys. <laughs> uh, I said this one was my favorite, but, but this color floral and just this fabric in general, just wow. So this one is another midi dress that has longer sleeves and uh, also kind of like a beautiful tie here. Romantic ruffle collar and also it has a waist tie that you can just adjust as you go. Um, it looks a little see-through and that is because it comes with a slip in the matching print. And can I just comment how romantic even uh, the waist tie is? It has these like kind of flowery things. Here's the third piece in the same exact print, but this is the skirt version. Maybe just sometimes you don't want to go head to toe in the same print. And then uh, the skirt is a good option. Elasticated and it has a zipper opening so it's, it's so so well thought out. I also styled it with this knitted cardigan with a short sleeve. Perfect for for the summer just to throw on 
on top of your outfit when you're cold and uh, or you can also wear it as a top i always look for these kind of very timeless and classic goes with everything type of top they come in several different colors a couple of black dresses that of course i always have to get something black because most of my bags are very dark color so this one is so gorgeous made of 100 percent silk sort of like classic wrap around design but it's a faux wrap i love a good spaghetti style and also uh, the sides have this invisible zipper gorgeous drape and yeah a little bit of ruching around the stomach area so it's so flattering and honestly so comfortable of course i almost forgot to mention it comes with a matching little hair tie another a gorgeous classic black dress ruching design on the side and kind of that bustier look uh, very very flattering and the best part about this dress is that you don't need to wear a bra because it comes with removable cups just genius every dress should be that way and of course the invisible zipper on the side this material is kind of like a cotton as well a little bit of stretch i also chose this one which is kind of like a fun a little theme dress it's inspired by the Changsam or the Kpo. Slightly shorter length just for kind of your everyday wear, but it has that kind of a traditional neckline and sleeves, and it's just in this gorgeous printed cotton. I already own this dress in black from last time, but it's such a staple and such an easy dress for the office or just for the in transitional time, especially in the spring, it's so kind of cool or in the fall. And this color is another neutral, kind of your off-white, almost salmon pink. You just throw it on, there's no buttons to unbutton or anything because this material is a little stretchy. This is a perfect office dress. It's in their very famous worsted wool in this gorgeous beige off-white color. I love the sweetheart neckline. It actually goes with the matching blazer that I got last time, so I'm gonna show you the blazer in a moment. Moment. but yes it also comes with this optional belt which you can use this belt actually really matches the dress very very well this was the blazer that I got last time I love the workmanship and the worsted wool material on this one I was such a fan of it that I wanted to get the matching vest and of course the matching dress that you saw just earlier so here's the matching vest of course you can wear this vest along with the whole suit but for the summertime these kinds of vests especially this year has become Become so popular you can wear it with any kind of shorts or pants this kind of sleeveless vest outfit is so in trend this summer of course I had to go with some white shorts and white pants so remember guys when I showed you the pair of black pants last time well I got the white version and I sized down this time it's elasticated so it has a little bit of give pockets of course some pleats in the front and it's so generous especially those of you who have hips even comes with a complimentary belt which i didn't use with pants i'm always worried if they're too tight because i don't like to be uncomfortable but when they have elastics that means they're definitely a little bit more giving love 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 a good crispy white pants for the summertime um these are also fully lined as you can see all the way to the bottom of the pants last but not least something slightly different than the usual so when i saw this kind of fabric it immediately reminded me of uh, the dior oblique design so those of you who are looking for a dior inspired kind of outfit um it's not dior obviously but it's kind of giving me that vibe so it's a three piece it comes with the matching skirt, fully lined, very heavyweight. This top, of course, which is a plain button up with these very uh, small gold buttons. And also, this tank top has removable bras. It's already padded. You can remove it or keep it in there. I'll make sure to list and link every single outfit that I featured in here along with the size that I took. So check it out in the info box and if there's any promo code or promotions, I'll make sure to also include all that details down below. Okay, back to the review. Let me give you first and foremost the nitty gritty details, which is the exact weight and dimensions of the bags. My Kelly 25 measures exactly 25 centimeters from the bottom. And I love that because when it says 25, it should be 25, which is not the case for the 28. 
So I really love that the size 25 cilier is true to size. Now, I never measured the height, which one of my subscriber eventually asked. And right now I measure 28 centimeters. And the width at the bottom is about 9.5 centimeters. Just to be very, very precise, I'm gonna measure the weight of the bag itself with the straps. Nothing else, not an organizer or anything like that because each of us will just own different organizers anyway, different thickness, different brands. So we'll just do the bag and the strap. And as you can see the bag itself without the clochette, just the bag and the strap, it only weighs 550 grams, 1.2 pounds. So that is for me feather weight. This is the reason why I love the size 25 because to me, a pound or half a pound makes a huge difference for me. And also, by the way, different leathers will weigh differently and a different bag from a different year or different leather will also maybe have slightly different measurements, but only very slightly. Both of my bags are in Epsom, but I can also say just from my personal kind of like observation between these two bags, I find that this one, my black Kelly, has kind of like a more supple Epsom, whereas I find the Kelly 28 to have that heavier weight it's just stiffer. I don't know if it's just because it's newer, but I just feel like the material is thicker on this bag. Like, I can just feel it. And I don't know if it's just because the 28 also have different compartments, which I'm going to show you the inside and compare that as well. So my Kelly 28 actually measures a whopping 29 centimeters. It just goes to show that um, it's not true to size. It's not 28 really, it's 29, at least on mine, right? And the height of this one also is significantly taller. So right now I am measuring 33 centimeters. And then the width of the bag, which also is quite significant, compared to the 25 is about 11 and a half centimeters. So just even side by side, I'm gonna try to align them. You could see how much more wider the bag is from the side, how much more taller it is. And just like this as well, you could see how much more significantly bigger. Of course, the color white will reflect a bit bigger size as well. So this Kelly right here weighs 798 grams, just the strap and the bag, no clochette, which translates to 1.76 pounds. What does that mean? It means that it is heavier than this by a whopping 0.55 pounds. And like I said, and I'll repeat myself, someone like me who is kind of sensitive to even a slight bit of weight, a half pound, over a half pound is a huge deal for me. No, it's not a deal breaker. No, of course not. Um, but it is definitely not my preference. Let me give you the dimensions of the straps as well. Both of my straps, both Kelly 28 and Kelly 25 have the exact same class, the exact same strap width, and almost the exact length, about 93 centimeter long. I've just a little over 90.5 centimeters, just about two and a half centimeters difference, but when it's on the shoulder, they look exactly the same length, which is why, because this size bag is so much bigger, the drop is so much longer on me. Another major difference, aside from the weight and the dimensions, of course, is the aesthetic, but also the inside back there is a zippered compartment in the front of uh, the kelly 25 there's also a slip pocket i don't know if you guys can see that there you go it's a pretty straightforward design and you'll be able to see that better on the kelly 28 with the front compartment on this one it is actually stitched right in the middle so it's instead of one large compartment it's two compartments which I don't know if I prefer. I don't ever really use them. So that's the problem with these stiff bags or very structured bags is that I don't really tend to use the compartments that are inside. Something quick and easy that uh, I just need quick access. But other than that, I don't really use these compartments. They're kind of useless in a way, but I guess it's good to have some slip pockets. Uh, but for sure, the back compartment with the zipper, it's even harder to reach. 
I will use them only if I want to keep something super secure and I know they're not going to fall off of the bag. A very quick mention for the inside of my bag, I always use an organizer just because I want to protect the lining. So I always go for something super thin and super lightweight. This one is a Samorga. I've got this one for a while. It's in their 1.2 millimeter felt. And this one I got from Azumoni. So they're both uh, Korean felt organizer companies. Zumuni actually started making the satin fabric one, which I also like, but I don't like to keep that inside my bag because I do find them a little thicker. So I will use the silky ones when I'm using the bag and I will keep the felt one inside the bag for storage. So with this one, I went with no pockets and I just added a lipstick pocket because I love having my hand sanitizer um, in one place. So same, same thing, I went with the thinnest material possible. Are these organizers necessary by any means? No, not at all. But I figured if you're gonna invest over 20k 30k for these bags to begin with what's another 50 bucks to just protect the inside that's how i see it now aside from the size and the weight of the bag you will also notice that the size 25 and size 28 have different size hardware side by side you can see how much thinner the sangles like those little arms that you see uh, they're a lot thinner and a lot daintier than the size 28 and I'm pretty sure the size 30 like Birkin will also have this size sangle So this is kind of like the original size I feel whereas this kind of smaller size They probably did it later and made it even smaller just to match the size of the bag But yeah, you'll also see that all the hardware pieces on both the 25 and the 28 are slightly different this one being smaller and of course the top where the strap goes this piece here is also bigger on the 28 versus the 25 and of course the handles themselves um, the 25 is a slightly smaller handle same with that piece in the back which is the back of the sangle and then also the chaps on the top right beside the handle those are also different sizes now for the bottom i couldn't really tell i feel like the bottom feet are the exact same size so i don't think they made smaller feet for a smaller bag or at least not on the 25 versus the 28 i just feel like they're the same but generally speaking the 25 will have everything shrunken a little bit and of course if it's a mini kelly it's going to be even more shrunken all right so here's another good look at the side-by-side -side general feel of the bags much much more bigger difference in height and in width of the bag both of these bags are without their straps right now and this is the vibe that you will get when they are just closed with the sangles tucked inside but without the straps they both definitely look super prim and proper this way Again, with the size 28 being a much bigger size, it does look like it's a huge bag on me. Let's just try it individually. Now, the 28 on its own without the 25 beside it looks it looks okay. It looks like just like a decent size bag without being too overwhelming. It's definitely a good size bag. It's much bigger and because it does have the structure of the cellier it will look a lot bulkier on the crook of the arm the 25 on the other hand is kind of that petite size small size bag definitely petite enough that it just looks like a nice uh, evening bag or day bag uh, without being too small here's another look at the 28 because of its size, of course we're never going to hold it this way, right? But because of its size, it's not overly big if you have a much taller stature than me, but it does borderline a little bit briefcasey on me, if that makes sense. Now, one of the ways that I like to carry the Kelly is to have it open. I love to almost like just slouch it out because for me, this gives the Kelly Celia especially a little bit more of that casual vibe. 
and I really like that. I think it modernizes the look and I also think that um, I, I almost like that it's a bit casual looking because this is definitely prim and proper and it's great sometimes but uh, when you're wanting to get in and out of your bag sometimes I just like to have it open so this is how it would look like between the two again this being open will look even bigger in stature so it will look even more briefcasey whereas you don't get that same vibe with this size Now I will admit, when I do have the straps on and on my shoulder, I will never leave my bag open like this. So I will always make the effort to close it first and then put it on my shoulder. I also find that um, having the straps and the bag open looks a bit too much. So what about for you? Do you prefer the 28? Or do you prefer the 25 and for what reasons? Let me know down below. Of course, in today's video, I can only compare the Cellier style. And I think I do prefer Cellier, at least for the look. Now, I know for a fact, and I've heard many times, that the Retourné style, so the other style, not the one where it's finished on the outside, but the one that is finished on the inside and tucked in it definitely has more of a slouch and it's made with different leathers typically not epsom usually with a grain leather the dimensions will also vary quite a bit as compared to this style and i've always heard that a lot of people prefer that style because of how easy it is to get into the bag now is the kelly for me really an everyday bag no but i do enjoy using it one thing that I've noticed, at least for Hermes quota bags, although they are somewhat of a status symbol, they're very expensive to buy, and um, it's kind of a luxury to even just to have them and to maintain them. I find the bags themselves, they're still somewhat easy enough to be practical and to also work for an everyday kind of um, use. Again, kind of like in air quotations, right? Like they're obviously not gonna be treated that way. At least I don't. I don't really use my bags every day and I don't treat them as my everyday bags. I will definitely take my Kelly to the local mall, going to visit with my friend. I will also take it to a nicer event and I will of course take it to um, a wedding and whatnot. So I definitely, use them more for special occasions, but I also take them to just casual outings more than I ever thought. Does that make sense? And once you have them for a while, they're a lot easier to, to use than you ever think. They're not the easiest, but they're a lot easier than you think. There is this whole debate whether you should close or leave your bag open because technically speaking with the Cellier style, even if you leave it open, it's not going to really gape open. Your things are not going to fall off because there is enough structure for it to just kind of keep the inside of the content safe enough. So when I open them, I find them a little bit more cool and casual, almost edgy in a way. So I like that about opening the Kelly. Um, and I don't find it to be unsafe for that matter because there's enough structure for it to kind of just keep it this way. Uh, even if you had a lot more stuff in it, it's not going to get more open than this, I find. It's actually okay. Whether it's a good thing for the leather, that's another story. Again, I'm not suggesting that you open your bag and use it that way, but I do find myself leaving them open for some stretches of time and I do eventually close it, but I'm kind of comfortable to leave them open here and there because otherwise it is a pain to get in and out of it. I'm not gonna lie, it's because of the structure and kind of that rigidity of the leather, the flap itself and just the way the closure is. I mean, you need two hands. You need two hands to be able to open and close this bag. There's just no other way unless your bag is very flexible and 
maybe small enough. I think with the 25, I can manage to do it with one hand sometimes, but it just depends. Like right now I'm having a bit of trouble. It's kind of getting in the way, right? These sangles, that's definitely one of the cons. Um, but generally speaking, I think you need two hands to handle uh, the Kelly Cellier and even more so with the size 28 because again this one is so much stiffer just to close it you want to be able to pull on these sangles so that they are more receded in these sides here you want them to recede go back inside so that you can really use both hands and close it and even then it's not the easiest thing because again Remember, these bags right now are empty. Once you have content inside, it's going to be heavier. You might be holding other things. You might have your bag on your crook of the arm or on your shoulder. Depending on the configuration and how fast you're going, it's going to take a minute or at least a good concentration to really open and close your bag. And that is definitely one of the biggest cons of the Kelly. Kelly Sevier especially. I find that even more true for the Kelly 28. As you see, right? It even looks a bit mangled right now, and it's not mangled at all. It's just that this bag is so new, the stiffness is still there, the leather has not softened up, that you really need to take the time to pull out the sangles, make sure all the sides are equal, and then really close your bag. It's because the leather on this one is still quite stiff and rigid as compared to my 25. Another con, of course, even if you're not bothered by how e hard or easy it is to get in and out of the bags, because that's just a personal thing. Some of us really like the fact that we have to take our time. It's kind of a luxury to get in your bag. But there is definitely another major con about the rigid structure of the Cellier style. Quite sharp everywhere. Um, it's much easier to bump into different surfaces if you hit anywhere on the bag surface hard enough, it might leave an indentation. On the other hand, as you can see, even though these sides, they're quite firm and even the bag itself is quite firm, but the flap itself, a lot less thick, right? The flap itself is this and the edge of the bag is this. So even the edges around the uh, corner of the bags can sometimes look lifted. Like if you look at any vintage bags, these corners can start looking lifted if you're not careful or if you're using your bag quite freely to put it lightly um, meaning if you're quite rough with your bags it can really do a number on these corners and do a bunch of wear and tear that you might not like to see and in those cases i will say the retourné style will probably be more suitable for you. For me, when I decided to go for the Cellier versus the Retourné, it has more to do with 50% the aesthetic and 50% of the functionality and the ease of use. I always want my things to look cohesive and matching and just working with the general aesthetic that I am. So aesthetic for me, I give it quite a bit of a proportion in terms of priority, which is why I do prefer this structured style more. Not to say that I will never go for a retourné down the road, but for now and just at this stage in my collection, I think that having Cellier is, is, is working quite well for me. Now the other 50% of what I value is also the ease of use. I have to say, the Kelly 25 really surprised me, at least the 25 size being kind of like that smaller stature, but I think the smaller it is also, even though it's a stiffer bag, it doesn't it doesn't feel as rigid. It doesn't feel as hard to open and close, if that makes sense. Please let me know if you feel the same way, if you have the larger and the smaller size Kelly. I feel like this size is easier to open and close than the Mini Kelly and is also easier than the 28 because the 28, at least maybe because mine is quite new, uh, the leather feels very thick and very stiff and just to close even the sides here takes a bit of effort. Like you really have to maneuver all the different areas in the bag just to close it properly so it's not looking mangled whereas the 25 for me is so easy like it just has that perfect in-between 
softness, rigidness, and also structure and size, which is, again, I'm kind of raving about the size 25, but that is the reason why I also really like it. I was really pleasantly surprised at how easy and, and you know, kind of, yeah, easy to use. Like for me, the 25 Kelly is quite practical in my opinion, which is the reason why I was so surprised because you always hear, right? Before I've ever owned these bags, I always hear like, oh, Celier is just kind of like stuck up, it's too serious, and it's um, too hard to get in and out, which I didn't find it to be the case at all for me. It's almost the opposite for me. Again, the 28 Kelly, if you've watched my video, how I got it, it was not on my wish list, but I did fall in love with the color combination, which is why I decided to take it. And of course, without even trying it, you don't really know all the ins and outs, but now that I've owned the bag for a few months, I can solidly tell you that it is not as easy as the size 25. It's just more to contend with, more material and more sort of like structure to contend with. It's almost like it is just big enough and just heavy enough that it is not as easy as the 25. On the other hand, even though we're not talking about the Mini Kelly here, but just to give you a bit of perspective, the Mini Kelly is also hard to get in because it's so small that it's so hard to get in and out because it hardly fits anything. I will say, however, that the 28 does have something that the 25 doesn't have, which is the extra space. Because when I was using this 28, again, I kind of like to use it a bit open sometimes, so I can even shove more things. So the time that I was using this 28, I was at a mall and I bought some little shopping things and I was able to fit all of that inside, which I wouldn't be able to do that with the 25. This is just too small of a bag. It just literally fits my essentials and I wouldn't want to push it in any other way, like shove a shirt inside and all. I was able to do that with the 28. So that's something that I need to kind of explore more as I go with this bag, as big bags are coming back in trend. I do think that I will discover more pros and possibly more cons with the 28 size but maybe more pros that I haven't realized yet because again, it's still kind of new in my collection. Okay, let's talk about some pros. For me, it's just the aesthetic. I just like the prim and proper look. I just like that they stay in shape. Even if you don't have an organizer, they stay in shape. And for me, they're quite easy to maintain. I also like Epsom. Generally speaking, like I said, you will find these bags made in Epsom because it's one of their pressed leather, so it keeps the structure. It's also a lighter leather. Another pro that I love about the Kelly, generally speaking, is the fact that you do have the ability to have the strap, although I don't use it all the time, but I will say I probably use it 30% of the time. And because it comes with the design, it's definitely still seamless. It doesn't look like it's an extra piece hanging there that you find unsightly, but obviously without it, it looks better. But um, with it, it also is just as beautiful and almost a little bit more modern because these days it's all about everything not just aesthetic but practicality as well another pro for me is the structure for me the structure is an important part of keeping the look of the bag as new as possible however the structure also makes it a little bit harder to style sometimes because it does make it more prim and proper so depending on the outfit or depending on where I'm going, the Kelly is not always going to be suitable. Now, you can always make it work. It's the 21st century. But generally speaking, I do find this style to be a little bit more serious, um, even though you can definitely make it work. But one thing is for sure is that I do love these two bags, at least in these two colorways. They are gorgeous. I think a black and gold Kelly 25 is literally the most perfect classic. If we're talking Chanel, it's like the, you know, Chanel classic flop small basically is this. And you can't go any more classic and timeless than that. And this one is just kind of like that cherry on top, having a bit of variety and a bit of variety of size to try as well. Again, I am still learning. I'm still learning about this bag and still trying to figure it out, but 
as you can see the colorway it really works for me even with what i'm wearing today it's not about this dress i know but in a way it just speaks to how versatile these style bags kind of look they really work in a variety of settings and outfits let me know in the comments whether you are a cellier style girl or a retourné style are you a kelly 25 kelly 28 kelly 32 or even bigger type of girl i know big bags are back but of course my soft spot is still the 25. i want to experiment with the 28 a bit more and i want to see how much more i'm going to discover with this bag i also really love that it's in palladium it's so fresh and something different that i don't already have in my collection anyway i'll have everything i mentioned linked in the info box and of course have a great week ahead of you and i'll talk to you guys again very soon bye